Hey there, this is JG, and I have another update on damage mechanics in Eternal Evolution. I mentioned in a video a little earlier that I discovered that my previous research on defense mechanics was not completely accurate, and so I spent some time this week trying to figure out just what was going on, what I had missed, and hopefully come back with an updated damage formula that answers all the questions. Unfortunately, what I actually learned in the process is Defense is really weird in this game. It's a pretty complicated mechanic. I don't have all the answers. All I ended with was more questions. But I wanted to update what I have, what I do know, and how that changes strategy for me. So the first thing I want to update on is I did a more exhaustive test on damage distribution. And so I was measuring how large is the influence of the random number generator on the total damage that you do. I mentioned before, I've observed it to be about plus or minus 4%, the, the minimum possible versus the maximum possible, pretty consistently about a 4% gap if you do enough tests. The thing that I wasn't completely sure on is what's the distribution here. And this is two different views on the distribution. And my conclusion is it's, it's a completely linear distribution. It also doesn't appear to be quantized in any way. So it's not like it. Uh, there are only 10 distinct values you can get and uh, there's somewhere within that range. It appears you can roll pretty much any number in this entire range, and it looks like it's a completely flat distribution. So you see the histogram here. I mean, there's a little bit of variation just because of sampling, but this is not the shape of a bell curve or some other interesting distribution that peaks at the median there. But anyway, 4% um, range, bottom to top, and linear distribution in between. All right, so this is the main mystery that I uncovered. So my previous updates on defense mechanics were all pretty much gathered in one level. I was fighting in like Terradome 7 or something like that. One specific level of Terradome is where I gathered all my data, and I used different defense values and different DR values to come up with this curve. And it looks kind of like this blue dot curve. You know, it's a, an exponential decay curve of some sort. Um, the thing that I noticed that tipped me off that something was amiss here was I reran some numbers on a later level as part of some different research I was doing. I noticed that defense wasn't reducing damage as much as I was expecting it to in those tests. And so I tested different levels of Terradome here. I tested all the way 1 through 11, but this is an example of the difference between the very bottom and the very top. In Terradome 1, I was able to reduce damage as much as 75% with the top defense value that I tested. Terradome 11, the best I was able to do was 20%. As I mentioned in the previous video, this looks to be an exponential decay curve of some kind. The thing that I didn't expect is that the exponential decay curve looks different in different levels. And so, whereas at very low levels, it's possible to achieve really great damage reduction values, via high defense, um, it's much harder to reach those values in the higher levels. And so I did a bunch of work trying to figure out how exactly does this curve change? What are the different parameters to it? And uh, basically my conclusion is it's really complicated. There are variables in here that I'm not able to control very tightly. And so I'm not able to come up with a generalized damage formula. That said, I think I still have some really solid advice about what to do about your defense stats in the game. So first takeaway, the damage reduction stat seems to still work as advertised in all the locations that I've tested it. And so you know, the true damage reduction that you get is one divided by one plus the damage reduction. So 100% damage reduction reduces your damage by 50%. You know, it's one, it becomes one over two in that case. 200% damage reduction becomes a 66% reduction in your total damage. You would go down to one third because you're at one over three in that case. Um, so that appears to be very consistent and not changing across any of the levels that I'm testing. And the second takeaway is defense gets less and less effective against stronger opponents. And so while I showed that nice curve in Terradome 1, where you're able to get 75% or more damage reduction, you can't get that in any useful level. So if you're really beyond the very first couple levels of the game, then the defense stat really drops in value to you. So although I don't have the exact formulas for you, still everything supports this conclusion that defense is not a good stat to invest in. 
it is not nearly as powerful as investing in HP or damage reduction. If all you care about is maxing your characters and you don't want to dive into the specific math here, you can probably drop out right now. Um, what follows is going to be the specific data that I gathered, the weird oddities that I found in it, and the reason that I'm asking a lot of questions. If you're curious uh, or you like the math, please stay on. But if that's not your cup of tea, um, so long. Thanks for watching. And uh, let's do some math and spreadsheets now. So the first thing I noticed in doing this is essentially as, um, as the level went up, as the total damage you were receiving went up, the effectiveness of your defense went down. And so my first hypothesis was maybe there was a flat damage reduction value at play. Essentially, what if in addition to there being some sort of exponential curve that gives you percentage res resistance to data, what if you just knock off some number of points of damage based on how high your defense is? You know, the easiest way to think of it is, you know, in addition to a percent reduction, you just subtract your defense stat from the total damage that you're taking. Now, what that's going to do is if you're taking a really small amount of damage, if you're taking 10,000 or less damage and you have about 10,000 defense, then you'd expect that to decrease by a pretty large percentage because that flat factor of your defense becomes a much larger ratio of the total damage. Whereas when you get to a high level, you know, you're taking 200k damage at a hit and the impact of subtracting 10,000 from that really makes noticeable difference and you're really much more concerned about the damage reduction percentage. So I hypothesized that we might have a formula more or less of this form. So that exponential decay curve minus some coefficient times your defense. However, I was able to disprove that pretty quickly. I was able to get some curves that seemed to fit if I only considered one level at a time, only considered Teradome 1 or something like that. They really failed to generalize. Um, here's a really good example, some samples of my data. The top table here is Teradome 1. And so what you see here is at high levels, this amount of defense, 8201, gets you 18% damage reduction. Um, at low levels, we're getting 69% um, damage reduction. And so what I'm hypothesizing is in the lower table, you're getting 18% percentage damage reduction, and then you're subtracting another 3,000 damage out of this, which in this case would be 37% of your defense value. Um, if that were the case, though, then you'd expect this value, the medium defense level, to be a very different. It, um, instead of 3,500, it should be more like 4,600. Um, so that really didn't seem to add up. Um, the curves just didn't generalize across difficulty levels. So I scrapped this idea. I don't think that um, the flat damage reduction quite makes sense. So the second thing that I theorize is there's some function of raw damage defense and damage reduction percentage that generates your final damage. So I sort of thought this was a given going into this, that uh, you know, those should be the, the three inputs. There shouldn't be any other side inputs to, to deciding what damage you take. It should just be, you know, whatever raw damage was computed, you know, some number of times the opponent's attack. That's where you start from. There's some amount of reduction done by defense and DR that gets you to a final value. So even though we might not know the function yet, we do observe that higher damage values get reduced less than lower damage values. And so this function does something where you know, when raw damage is high, then it behaves differently than when raw damage is low. Now there's a place that I found that was really useful for testing this, which was Visa Caves. Uh, whereas I used Teradome for a lot of my previous tests, I discovered that Disa Caves has a really interesting property here, which is that the boss has two different attacks that they'll use that give you very precise attack values. So there's this AOE attack that it uses right out of the gate, and that deals 160% of attack. And then if no one is in melee range, he has an attack that is a rock throw that deals 1,000% of attack. And so if I use a ranged unit, uh, I use Sorietta for a lot of these tests, um, you know, put them in the back and uh, you know, I take the AOE pound, log what damage I get there, take a rock throw, it's a lot more damage. But the useful thing here is we know the raw damage here is off by a factor of 6.25. We know that's the difference in 
what what the incoming damage is. And so what we can really measure is for a single opponent, you know, what changes do we see? And so if our hypothesis is that you get less damage reduction percentage-wise at higher attack values, even at higher raw damage values, then although we know the raw damage is 6.25 different, you would expect the actual observed ratio in the wild to be more than 6.25. Because if you're reducing damage on the AoE attack by 10%, then you would expect that you're reducing the damage from the rock throw by less than 10%, because higher damage has less damage reduction, uh, and so the ratio is going to be somewhere over 6.25. Um, so that's what I went in as the thing I was trying to prove, is that we got a multiplier greater than 6.25. And um, I initially ran this in Disa Caves level 10, and didn't get the result I was looking for. I, I got right at that 6.25 value. You know, the, the actual math here is 6.24 and 6.23. That, that at least suggests that the the raw damage is behaving as advertised. Um, what I realized, though, is even the first hit is 76,000 in that case. Um, that's pretty high damage. That's well beyond the place where I was seeing damage reduction dropping off a lot in my other tests. Um, so I decided to rerun the test at a much lower level of use of caves, and that's where we saw exactly what I was expecting uh, to see with the hypothesis I was testing, which was um, the difference here was significantly over 6.25. And so at low initial damage values, um, you see you know, the difference in damage reduction for a 3k attack versus a 19k attack is substantial enough that uh, you know, you're, you're really observing this um, ratio between them that's larger than 6.25. So that seems to support this idea that you could have this you know, pure function of raw damage, defense, and DR percentage that gives you the final output damage. However, in putting this together with some of my other tests, I was able to disprove that particular hypothesis. Um, here's the data that I looked at. Uh, you probably don't see the pattern. It took me a little while to, to think this through all the way. But what we see um, in the Terra Dome is that you know, defense of about 2750 yields about 42% damage reduction I'm assuming that the 74 defense is basically zero. You know, it's it's small enough, but we get 42% damage reduction from something close to the raw damage in Terradome 1. So then what if we translate that percentage to what we see in Disa Caves, which is an AoE attack hitting for um, 2,800 damage. And so in this case, the defense value across these tests are very close to each other. The damage values, these were as close as I could get them to each other. So um, we would expect that we're seeing roughly the same ratio of raw damage to final damage if the only variables that are influencing it are defense and raw damage. Um, so this predicts that the raw damage in this Disa Cave hit is about 4946, uh, you know, close to 5k, and then it's being reduced down to this 2860 that I actually measured. Now, we can repeat that same logic for the harder hit. Um, so we have a case where we have, uh, again, about 2750 defense, and we're taking about 20k uh, damage. In this case, it was Terradome 4 was the place where I was able to take that much damage from a Terradome hit, um, where it's still Disa 4, where that 1,000% attack hit is dealing 19k damage. So um, in Terradome 4, that amount of defense, it's about 23% reduction from that 27k down to 20k. Um, so that predicts that the raw damage we're looking at for this rock throw hit is about 24,677. Um, if you're really quick on the uptake, you've noticed that the ratio between those two predicted values in Disa Caves 4 is 5x. We know that the actual ratio here, because we know the attack multipliers, um, should be 6.25x. And so being at 5x versus 6.25x is substantially off. So like the amount we're off here, initially I was expecting 42% damage reduction on that lower hit. Um, I'd have to be off by 15 percentage points. The actual damage reduction would have to be 27% instead of 42% for this to actually hit the multiplier that, that we're expecting. 
That's a big change. Uh, incidentally, you may have noticed that my damage values here are, uh, my damage and defense are not exactly the same. This is also off in the opposite direction from what we would predict. We would expect that um, we would see a higher damage reduction than 42% here because it's a, a smaller hit and smaller hits we know we can reduce by more. So this pretty much shatters hypothesis number two and yields a result that really surprised me, which is that final damage is not just determined by the incoming raw damage and your defensive stats. Um, the attacker influences the results in some way. Um, so some stat on the attacker influences how much damage they do. The obvious next question is which stat? And the problem is I can't see the enemy's stats, so I, I can't test that. So you know, really it's a big black box here that without maybe doing some source code diving um, or something like that, I can't figure out what I'm up against. And so it's really hard to correlate this with any of that. I, the two that come to mind for me are gonna be level. Uh, you know, there's plenty of games where level influences um, you know, your damage mechanics in some way beyond just the fact that you have higher base stats. The other one that I could imagine is attack. I think that's a really weird choice because attack already influences the damage you do via your attack multipliers. It seems weird to also have attack decrease the effectiveness of defense on your opponent. Um, but basically, this is where I hit a wall. You know, I can tell through my tests that who you're up against matters in terms of how effective your defense is. But what I can't tell is exactly how much they're going to influence that, what stats they have that might do that, um, and the extent to which it might be higher in some locations than others. Except um, one of the things that I can measure, you know, even if I don't know the exact inputs to the formula, I can look at some of the outputs and produce some guesses on them. And so I did a couple of tests, um, you know, across my various tests, I had a number of side-by-sides here where I have about 2850 defense and about 1300 defense, 13 to 1400. Um, I have a number of side-by-sides of those in various different locations. And I actually decided, in addition to the easy tests like um, Disa Caves and Terradome, where you can rerun a specific difficulty level, I also did a test in Campaign. I did a really weird test in Arena. I'm sure if someone was reading the battle log, they're really confused why I challenged them multiple times in a row with a two-person team. Um, but what these side-by-side -side tests show is between 1,300 and 2,850 defense, what percentage difference does that make in the total damage you receive? And so at the very low levels, you know, Terradome 1, that extra 1,500 defense is worth about 26% further reduction in damage. Whereas in Terradome 11, where, you know, as I pointed out, the curve is a lot flatter, it takes a lot of extra defense to decrease your damage, that 1500 defense is worth only 4%. And so here are the values that I got in other locations. And so basically what we see is that once you get into high-level content, defense makes a pretty small difference. Uh, you know, 1500 is uh, is a pretty smallish amount of defense here. You know, you can definitely pump you know, many thousand into some of your tankier heroes. But um, we do still know that it's an exponential-like decay curve where, you know, you're not going to keep getting that 7% or that 4% for every 1,500 after this. It's going to drop off. And that's up against the value of your DR percentage as a different stat you could be chasing um, or HP percentage as another stat you could be chasing. And so this really supports that conclusion that investing in defense is a bad idea. Now, the one thing that I will point out, um, Arena, uh, I was curious about, again, since my hypothesis is that level is the big differentiator here, um, I did log the level of my opponent. But this 11%, I mean, 11% is not shabby. Um, so, uh, you know, having at least a moderate defense level in Arena may make some difference. This is still substantially less than you can get from investing in damage reduction equipment. But it seems like the arena opponents are a little less potent than the other enemies that you're able to challenge at a roughly equivalent difficulty level. And so defense is more effective in arena than it is elsewhere. 
I still very much stand by the conclusion that it's not worth investing in. You should really focus on other ways of extending your effective HP. Um, so what's next for these tests? Um, I would love to get commentary from some of you that are also mathematically minded on other tests that could be run because I'm kind of at the end of my rope here. Um, I don't tend to like, like decompile Android APKs and look at and try to go diving through the code for specific values. That's not my expertise here. So I've more or less decided I'm done researching damage for a while. Uh, if you have any bright ideas, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. And uh, maybe that'll be the thing that sets me off on my next adventure, trying to figure out what exactly is going on in the game. And that's it for tonight. If you like this, please drop me a, a like and a subscribe uh, to encourage me to continue diving through this game and trying to figure out how the mechanics work. That's all I have tonight. JG out.